Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using Universe Starbucks Square to talk about a really cool idea of galactic tides. Basically tidal effects from the center of our galaxy. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> So what you see in front of you is a recreation that I made previously where I was trying to play around with the idea of galactic tides or the effects of the central black hole and the central region of our galaxy on various objects in our solar system. But we're actually going to recreate this from scratch and I'm going to talk more about the details and why we're actually doing this. But before we start all this, let's actually briefly define what tidal force or a galactic tide actually represents. So any kind of a tide is essentially a tidal force experienced by any object, like for example, right here, there's Earth right here, that actually is experiencing tidal forces from uh, the center, from the uh, galactic center that's right there. Uh, we are familiar with tides on Earth, uh, we see them anywhere there is water, and usually those tides are caused by either the moon or the orbit of the moon around the Earth. And so in this case, the moon is right there, and because it's right there, it's actually pulling on Earth, so the water level right here is going to be um, raised compared to water level on the other side. And we also get the same tidal effects from the sun as well. So because Earth is actually um, orbiting around the sun, uh, the side that's the closest to the sun also is experiencing tidal effects as well. But they're actually very, very minuscule. But because our sun is orbiting around the galactic center, it's also experiencing tidal effects from that. So as the sun actually orbits around the galactic center that you're about to see in a second, so there's Sagittarius A star, um, as it orbits around this region, it's also experiencing galactic tides from essentially uh, the center of the galaxy. And these tidal effects um, are very, very small, but they can actually affect objects in our solar system. As a matter of fact, if you were to compare uh, the galactic force from the sun, from the moon, and from the galactic center, uh, the galactic center forces are very, very, very minuscule. And so if the tidal forces from the moon would uh, raise the water level on Earth by about 10 meters, then the tidal forces from the sun would raise it by about 5 meters, whereas the tidal forces from the galactic center would only raise it by a tiny, tiny number of about 1 picometer, which is actually smaller than the size of an atom. So the actual forces are quite insignificant, but the thing is, when it comes to objects, on the outskirts of our solar system, like for example things like comets that I just added right there, or things like asteroids in the Kuiper's belt, uh, these objects actually might get quite a lot of influence from uh, the tidal effects. And let's actually see if we can maybe simulate this a little bit, because they're actually far enough away from the sun to be affected uh, by any kind of perturbations. And also over time, over millions and billions of years, even these tiny effects of tidal forces might actually influence uh, various objects in, um, in our solar system. And so specifically, a lot of uh, scientists today uh, believe that the tidal forces from Sagittarius A star and from the central galactic region might actually have caused a lot of different um, uh, comet collisions and asteroid collisions in the past, and they may also have created up to 90% of all comets that we have today. And so as you can see, even uh, with just a little bit of time, uh, these various asteroids have already started to change their orbital paths a little bit, even with just a little bit of the uh, gravitational effects from the central black hole. Uh, but what I, what I want to do here is actually find out if there is um, any significant effects uh, from tidal forces that can possibly even influence our solar system in other ways. So let's actually create a new simulation with Sagittarius A star in the middle and possibly a few other smaller black holes just kind of orbiting around it, sort of just to represent uh, the galactic center. We're going to place them in a completely random order. They're going to just orbit everywhere, just to add a little bit of effect to the gravitational forces here. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to place a few suns with Earths orbiting around them. And I'm going to try to investigate two things, uh, two potential hypotheses that have been um, kind of unanswered still. And hypothesis number one is actually going to try to answer a simple question. Could have um, the effects that we observed in orbits of objects like Aries and Sedna have been caused by the galactic tide and not uh, Planet 9 that is still being searched by the scientists. Could it have been done by something else? 
In other words, uh, if, if, as you can see here, this is the Planet 9 simulation. Uh, the current uh, hypothesis is that those really extreme orbits of various um, Kuiper Belt objects has been caused by the hypothetical Planet 9. The other question we're going to try to answer is in regards to uh, um, some asteroids that we've discovered in our solar system that have a very peculiar orbit as well. And specifically we're talking about orbit that is retrograde and very, very, very highly inclined, sort of like this. And the third question we're going to try to answer is uh, in regards to our own solar system or just actual planets in our solar system that all seem to have a bit of an inclination. So if you were to actually look at all of the major planets here, they all seem to have just a little bit of inclination. Specifically here is this like 3.4 for Venus, um, 2.5 for Saturn and even 1.3 degrees for Jupiter. So this inclination has never been explained. Uh, the only explanation that we had so far is that maybe just maybe Planet 9 has actually caused that as well. Um, and maybe there is something that's causing the actual orbital plane to slightly uh, incline in comparison to other objects. But it's also possible that this could have been also caused by the galactic tides. So like, for example, Venus has 3.4 degrees and Mercury has seven degrees and it's not really explained yet, um, at least scientifically. And we only have speculations, but we're gonna find out if it's possible to actually create this kind of inclination uh, using a simulation with a central galaxy and basically a miniature solar system. So let's do it again. We're going to place a bunch of suns here and they're all going to have relatively similar parameters. First sun is going to be in circular orbit, second sun is going to be in circular orbit as well, third sun is going to get a little bit of an inclination because we want this to be just a little bit different and more, um, a little bit more realistic because our actual sun is not perfectly in a circular orbit around the gal uh, galactic center. Then we're going to place another sun with a slight inclination as well and basically we're now going to place earth's orbiting around them and we're going to kind of investigate various um galactic tidal effects on uh, these earths so um we're going to place earth in completely um perfectly circular orbit around the first sun completely perfectly circular orbit around the second sun and the other suns as well. Now the distance here is a little bit different, but we're just going to keep it um, relatively similar for now. So uh, let's actually name them as well. And the first sun is going to be known as the circular sun. This sun right here is also circular, but we're actually going to maybe give the earth that orbits around it a little bit of initial inclination. Just so it has some, uh, just some inclination and we'll see how it actually changes later on. And we're going to name the sun inclined earth. The third sun will get a slightly eccentric Earth. We'll see how that changes with time as well, and we're going to name this eccentric. And the last sun will get a bit of everything, and so it's going to be both eccentric and inclined. And actually, I think I'm going to add one more sun, and this is just going to be uh, another uh, circular orbit sun. And this time we're going to place Earth in a more realistic sort of orbit. Basically, it's going to be orbiting sort of perpendicularly at about 90 degree inclination right here. So kind of like this, this is what it's going to be doing. And now that I've actually set up all five of them, I'm going to kind of see what happens after a few orbits around the central black hole. Now, I think a lot of them are smoking mostly because they are relatively close to the sun. But I think with time they should stop smoking and start basically orbiting. Now, the reason I wanted to actually change the parameters for all of these um, different objects is because I wanted to take a look at various graphs here. So we're going to actually accelerate time a little bit so that uh, the actual um, planets are orbiting around the sun, which I think they're doing right now. Let me just double check if they're actually orbiting. Yeah, I think they are. And uh, as they orbit around the sun, they should start uh, getting various uh, changes in their parameters here. So maybe not all of them will have a stable orbit. I think actually this one here just flew away. Uh, but a lot of these other objects are going to stay in orbit around the parent star. I think this one is definitely orbiting. So is this one. Uh, so is that one and this one as well but i'm guessing it's uh it's because i placed the earth a little bit too far away maybe i should place them a little bit closer so that we actually have a slightly better visible orbit 
And let's try this again. So this time they actually have their parameters reset and they're a little bit closer to the sun at about 10 million kilometers. So as you can see, this one here was supposed to have only inclination. And what I wanted to actually do uh, is to look at the graphs here and how they actually change as the sun's orbit around the central um, gal galactic region or central black hole. But if I were to actually click on inclination here and set it up as a separate graph and also click on eccentricity, you would see that both of them would start kind of um, going up and down a lot. As these uh, stars orbit around the galactic center, the galactic tides will actually start influencing both the inclination and the eccentricity of every single Earth that we've created. And it will be more visible with certain um, stars, because like if a star has a very high um, eccentricity to begin with and it actually comes closer to the galactic center, it will obviously have higher galactic tide effects. And so these effects right here are actually the galactic tide effects that you're observing. So um, you can see that this particular Earth that's actually orbiting the inclination star was supposed to only have high inclination. But in reality, even though it actually has increased its inclination, it's also increased its eccentricity to about um, almost 1% now. And it's going to stop, uh, not stop, but continue doing this for quite a while. Let's actually take a look at other graphs as well. So this was the inclination um, Earth. Let's take a look at the circular Earth. And I think the circular Earth lost its Earth again. Oh, that's not good. Let's, let's replace it again. We need to try to make a stable system here. We're just going to place it a little bit closer. And so here we go. So this was a circular Earth a second ago. This is going to be its inclination graph, and that's the eccentricity graph. And as you can see that right away, even though it was a circular Earth with circular um, orbital parameters, basically it was in plane and it was completely circular, almost right away it acquires a bit of eccentricity and a bit of inclination, and it will start going up and down quite a lot. Um, and with time, this will change quite dramatically. Now, um, you may ask yourself, so, you know, how many orbits has our sun actually uh, done around the galactic center? And the answer to that is, well, approximately 25. One orbit takes just over 200 million years, um, and our sun is about 4.6 billion years old, so it's, it's somewhere uh, more than 20, possibly less than 30. And so within those orbits, uh, it's, experienced quite, it's experienced a lot of galactic tides, ups and downs uh, from various parts of the gal galactic center and from various interactions with other stars. And because of that, it obviously um, had some of the eccentricities and some of the inclinations changed um, in, within itself, within uh, other objects of our solar system. So for example, Venus and Mercury have a high inclination and it was possibly done by the galactic uh, uh, tides, not by the so-called Planet Nine. But you know what, for now we're, we're, it's just a speculation, so we don't really know. We're gonna leave this um, for now, we're gonna check out some other ones. And I believe actually many of them have lost their Earths because they weren't really in a stable orbit. And as you can see, even the uh, the Earth that was placed perpendicularly starts changing its eccentricity and inclination quite dramatically and quite periodically as well. So the galactic effects will basically affect every single object in our solar system, no matter how far away from the sun it is, including, of course, the sun itself. Uh, and so here the eccentricity is slowly increasing and the inclination keeps going up and down, but uh, I guess more down than up. And let's actually maybe investigate the other suns as well. And here, uh, this one is the eccentricity sun. This is the one that had high eccentricity already. And um, the eccentricity here has increased even more. The inclination is also increasing and actually very, very, very fast. Uh, so no matter how you place these Earths, no matter how you place the suns, uh, the galactic tides have a very, very, very big effects. And the last Earth I'm going to take a look at is the Earth that already had a bit of eccentricity and a little bit of inclination. And I just wanted to kind of see what the actual patterns will emerge here with time. So here we go orbiting around uh, the galactic center. And as you can see, as we orbit around it, uh, there's going to be a bit of a repetitive pattern. Now, it's not really predictable. It's kind of actually hard to predict, mostly because there's other interactions with these black holes and other stars in the system. But with time, you'll see that the inclination will kind of return to its original value, then possibly drop down, possibly increase. So there's always going to be some kind of an effect um, on this planet here. 
And so we're just going to wait a little bit and make it orbit around the sun just to kind of see what kind of a pattern emerges here. So this is probably the most realistic representation of our sun, uh, except of course that, it, that the actual Earth should be orbited more perpendicularly. Uh, but we're just going to let it run for a little bit just to see what kind of a eccentricity and what kind of an inclination pattern emerges. Now, so there's the galactic center in the middle. There, there's a lot of craziness going on. But as you can see, um, this is essentially the inclination curve. So it started at about 8 degrees. It slowly increased over time up to about 15 degrees after one orbit. And now it's at uh, around 18 degrees and it keeps increasing now. Whereas inclination, uh, sorry, eccentricity keeps going up and down periodically. So eccentricity is not changing too much, but the inclination definitely is changing, which is really a kind of an important finding here because this suggests two things. One is that galactic uh, tides could actually have uh, caused our the planets in our solar system to change their inclination quite dramatically. So maybe that's why Mercury's inclination is about seven degrees. Two is that um, possibly the asteroids that we have, like for example, the two asteroids I've talked about in one of the previous videos that have a very unique um, inclination and very unique orbital path may have actually uh, been created because of this as well. Maybe they they were influenced by the galactic tides and uh, their inclination was increased to about 110 degrees because of that. And three is that maybe the effects we're observing from um, various dwarf planets, like for example, Aries and Sedna, are actually not Planet Nine, but are actually caused by the galactic tides as well. Now, all of this will be discovered in the future when we do a little bit more research. But for now, for now, this is actually uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to show you how strong the galactic um, tides are and how uh, much they might be actually causing in our solar system, including, of course, uh, various potential collisions that could have actually wiped out the dinosaurs as well. So the asteroid that hit our planet 65 million years ago may have actually been um, redirected to our planet by nothing else but a galactic tide. Now, whether it's true or not, maybe one day we'll discover, maybe not. For now though, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone else who hasn't subscribed or who enjoys watching uh, these types of videos. And of course, leave a comment. What do you think? What do you think killed the dinosaurs? What do you think uh, happened to planets in our solar system? And why is it that they have such a high inclination compared to some other objects? And also let me know what you think about Planet Nine in general. Do you think it exists or do you think it's all galactic tides? Anyway, see you guys later. Don't forget to support this channel Patreon if you have a few dollars to spare because it does help me create better videos in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye. And let's actually accelerate time here and see what happens. Oh boy, I think my computer is about to burn down. This is very, very choppy, but very, very interesting. Also, what exactly is happening in this galactic center? Everything here is out of control. I placed those black holes in a circular orbit and now they're orbiting in their own sort of unique extreme way. And there's one that's actually very close to Sagittarius A star. Interesting.